Hi, Pastor Lars Hammer from Lord of Grace Lutheran Church. Welcome back to Advent Devotions, where we walk through some different passages of the book of the prophet Isaiah, focusing in particular on passages that talk about Jesus and the coming of the Messiah, passages that we often read in Advent and at Christmas time. Today, I want us to look a little bit at Isaiah chapter 11. So get out your Bibles. We're going to take a read at this. I'm going to read the first few verses of this. This is a, a great passage here. So, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall lie with the lamb the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Wow, I could, I could read that one all day. Um, so let's walk through this a little bit, kind of one piece at a time here. The first, the first three verses deal in particular with a new king. So, and it uses lots of Bible code here. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse. Who's Jesse? Jesse is King David's father. And so anytime you sort of hear that sort of phrase about this, the shoot of Jesse, it's just a way of saying King David. So, a shoot shall come out from the stump of David, so, or Jesse. So this is going to be a successor to King David. So the, the coming Messiah is going to be somebody who is descended from King David. And what's going to happen to him? Is he going to do this by his own power? No. He's going to do what he does because the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. In other words, it's, it's a way of saying that even though he's born the right way, God is still choosing him to be the Messiah, and God is giving him the power of the Spirit to do the work of being this new leader, this new king, this new Messiah. And what are the traits that's going to make him a great leader? Spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord. Now, this is interesting. These are what are seen as the great traits of the new king. Wisdom and understanding. So he's smart, but he's also kind of street smart. He has knowledge. He isn't easily conned. He sees through things and sees around corners. He, he looks at things with a bigger picture. You know, a lot of being wise is just looking at the bigger picture and not just looking at immediately right in front of you, but looking long term, looking out to how actions have consequences. That's what you want in a leader, not somebody who's just impulsive and just barks things out, but who takes a little bit of time to think and say, okay, if I do this, what might happen? You still want them to act, but you want them to act with a certain wisdom and understanding. What else is he going to have? Counsel and might. So he's going to be able to give good advice, and he's going to have strength. Is it saying that his might will come from his counsel? Maybe. Or it could just be two different things he has. Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. 
So he is knowledgeable, he is well read, and he understands what he reads because the Spirit enlightens him to it. But he isn't a sort of a, I don't read, I don't learn, I don't know nothing, that makes me smart. That's not who this person is. This person is a knowledgeable person. And we'll see when Jesus comes that you get this image of him at baptism. Right When John the Baptist is baptizing Jesus, and then it says the heavens opened up and the Spirit of the Lord came down upon him like a dove. That's not an accident. Even though he was born the right way and had it in the genes, God still chose it, and the power he had to do what he did still came from God's Spirit. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. His delight shall not be in just get amassing wealth and pleasures for himself, but in doing what is God's will. Okay. The next part is interesting. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. When King David was chosen, this is a bit of a reference going back several hundred years, but when King David was chosen, the prophet Samuel came up to Jesse and said, Jesse, you know, I need to see your sons. You know, we got to see which one of them is going to be king. Jesse's all excited. One of my sons are going to be the new king. So he lines up all the sons as the story goes, and Samuel looks at each one and goes, eh, not quite, not quite, not quite, and then says, do you have another? And Jesse's like, well, there is David, but he's the little one out taking care of the sheep. And Samuel says, bring him here. So Jesse doesn't want to get in the bad side of the prophet, brings him, and that's king, that becomes King David. And then there's a line that Sa the prophet Samuel uses where he says, the Lord God doesn't see with the eyes that people do. People look at this older brother and see that he's buff and beautiful, and they say, yeah, he's the one that's going. Or they look at this guy and see how he seems really clever, and they're like, yeah, he must be. But that's human eyes. God looks at the little guy watching the sheep out, out in the desert and says, no, that's the one I want. Because God sees what's in the heart, right? So this, this person is going to be in that same way. The Spirit of the Lord is going to give him so he doesn't judge by appearances or looks or what the world says or peer pressure or common sense. He's going to go by what the Spirit enlightens in him. With righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. So he's going to make decisions on behalf of the poor and the meek. He's on their side. He's their advocate. He's their lawyer, which is an idea we kind of, you know, in the West kind of get nervous about. Wait, God's taking sides in a class? God can't do that? Well, it doesn't mean God doesn't love the very wealthy, but the wealthy can afford their own lawyers. Who's going to be the lawyer, who's going to be the advocate for the poor who don't have family connections and wealth and privilege and all these other sort of levers of power to use to get the courts to go in their favor? Well, that's why God says, no, this new king who's going to come, he's going to be the advocate for the poor. He will decide for the poor and the meek of the earth. Righteousness will be the belt around his waist. So that's what's going to be what upholds him, is his righteousness. So, so, so far, he's going to come from David. He's going to have lots of wisdom, and he's going to decide for the poor. I'm all, all, already good stuff. And then it shifts. This whole paragraph just makes a quick shift to what? This vision of a new world... And he uses animals to depict it. Interesting that he switches from, okay, this is what the king's going to be like, to this is what the world's going to be like. Now, what is the world going to be like? Well, it's basically described as predators and prey sitting down together and nobody eats anyone. That's the world. Everybody just sits around and chews grass all day. No, nobody hunts anyone. Nobody stalks anyone. The, you know, the predators no longer have to live in fear that they won't catch anything and they'll starve. The, the grass eaters won't have to live in fear 
that they're going to get eaten or their children will get eaten. Nobody has to live in fear anymore. Nobody has to exist off of somebody else's uh, life. No, no, nobody has to kill anymore. It's a world where basically everybody just sits around and like it says, eat grass and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. They're all just going to hang out and graze. What a great vision, right? Just, you know, well-fed, well-fed, secure, happy. This is what the world will be like. Does he literally mean that, you know, lions will start eating grass? No, they can't. They, they, they can't get enough nutrients to live off of grass. That's not physically possible. Their bodies are not adjusted to plant eating. So that's not, it's not a literal thing. It's an image. It's a way of saying that in this new world that God's going to make through the Messiah, that God's vision of this new world and God's plan for this new world is a world without the dog-eat-dog -dog competition where one gains success at the expense of the other, where everybody's in perpetual competition and fear, where there's all where there are, there's always winners and losers and the weak being cast aside. This is not God's vision. God's vision is a world where that doesn't happen, where it's so safe, you know, where it says the nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. So you got little babies sticking their hands into, you know, snake dens, poisonous snake dens, and the snake leaves them alone. The, a world where children don't have to fear predators. What a wonderful world, huh? This is the world as God envisions it. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. So there'll be no more hurting or killing. It will be the knowledge of the Lord that everyone lives off of. What a wonderful vision, you know. And uh, so, you know, again, might somebody go back and say, you know, this is really about restoration of an earthly kingdom of David. Well, a lot of people believed that, even up into Jesus' time, that that's what they were expecting. But boy, I look at this and I really think, you know, this is what Jesus is. He's not a worldly, a worldly king, a, a very human king. David, for all, his, all the good that he did, was also a very worldly person. And he was very much capable of killing and lust and, and power politics and all those other things. The world of David was not a world where everybody just lied down happy. It was a very violent place. And what God is projecting here is somebody in David's line who's going to make a world that's not such a violent, brutal place. And, and where God is going to have a Messiah who's looking out for the interests of of the poor and the meek. So that's, a, that's that vision of a Messiah. So just some thoughts on chapter 11 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. I hope you're all having a great Advent. Take care.